afternoon to all. The great philosopher Heidegger once said, take a leap into the darkness. I think today's theme indirectly relates to me the same way. I took it very seriously, I suppose. On 4th August 1986, I went into coma in Ruby Hall. And my friend said, doctor said, there is no hope. And my close friends told me later on that they prayed for my peaceful death because there may not be a much use of me in the future, becoming a burden to the society. I never appear on any stages. Today, somehow, through some means, I happen to be here. It is said in Bible, God created the world in six days, and he found it was very good. But today, when we look around, are we able to see that good in the world? Or the humanity is decreasing? In 1993, I was on my way to Pune and went to Satara Best Stand. I saw a man early morning sitting and eating some upma that was dumped near a trash bin. He was sitting a little far because a donkey and a street dog also was eating from the same dish. That said, still reflects in my mind. I don't know, perhaps God had a plan to put me into this work. Soon, I happened to see a home for the mentally challenged street children run by the government of Maharashtra. It cannot be called a home. There was not even a single toilet, working toilet, no running water, and almost all the children are totally naked. I remember some children were waiting for the excreta of other children to fill their stomach. A sin no human being should go through or live through. I had a plan to do something, but as we say, nothing is certain. Sooner or later, the person in charge came to us asking whether you can do something. I said, yes, we will do. But how? We were lit, disturbed. We took all these children to our office building. I still remember one boy, out of joy, he was telling, there is plenty of water, we'll bring all the people here, because first time they are seeing water like that. We gave them food, gave them bath, and with new dress, we made them sleep. Unfortunately, in an hour time, they were all in shit. We were not prepared for such a situation. But I can tell you, we were ready to take up the risk. All the children were running away from the home. That was their tendency. Somehow, if you leave immediately, they run away. But I can tell you, when you start a project, when you start to work with these children or anything like this, first you are scared. We don't know how to go about. But if you jump in, definitely you find the means. 
I will say, embrace the uncertain. Try to imagine, dream great things. Our great scientist, late Abdul Kalam, used to say, dream. Dear friends, I always dream great things. And partially I share it my, with my companions. If you say everything, they will call you mad. You are mad. And I listen to them. Get their feedbacks, their suggestions. And this will help us to go about. This is how I used to manage. But I don't say everything is easy. When I bought these children, I still remember one day I went to a shop and begged and got six pairs of shorts. But in an hour time, I could see the elastic of it on the forehead of a boy. He might have been imagined such a tender car or a hero. But that is the type of work we do. Soon, I must say, in 2000, when we took over this home from the government of Maharashtra, in the admission register, there were 153 boys, but we got only 42. I mean, in 14 years, 111 disappeared from the home, either died or ran away. The situation was that. Till today, in 17 years, we lost only 11 children. Why? We know every human being requires food, shelter, clothing. We give them. We give them good food, medical care, and training. I never keep them idle. They are always busy. They have no time. Morning once they get up. They have to do, go for yoga. They have breakfast. Then they have to go for work, personal work. And they come for the activities, evening, four o'clock, so many, till six, they have no time. So they are busy. And as Sudarshan was telling, when you come inside, you can come anytime. They are free. That keeps them. Children were running away. I used to sit in the back and use to look at how they are running. They look whether are you coming back? No, nobody is after him. Then they will stop. After five minutes, again they will run a little more and look back. Somebody is coming? No, nobody is coming. So slowly they come back. That's how I brought them back. Now we can keep it open. They won't run away. But still, dear friends, as the days passed, we found it was not easy to keep them like that. We wrote to the government, please transfer the elderly ones. They are becoming fit, physically fit, and they, are, they may be harm the younger ones. They are, I remember, they are all street children. Many are hyper, many are psychic. These are the children who are living with us. And they change. So anything can happen anytime. But the government has said, we have no place. Who will accept them? Father, you do something for them. We were in a dilemma. Then we went ahead and we started Ashagram, the new rehabilitation center. It is a place where they can relax, they can work, they get everything. Some people from Pune came to me and told me, Father, this Sorg is Sorg. That's what was a dream I kept in my mind. To build a Sorg for the children. When I heard it from somebody else, some visitors, I felt happy. A dream getting fulfilled to some extent. Dear friends, I don't say everything is smooth. There are times when we face difficulties, problems. 
is part of life. If it is not there, there is, then there is no life. It is said in the Bible, God will not permit you to be tempted to a degree that you cannot overcome it. If you are consistent, success is yours. I remember an incident happened to me. We had a boy called Lelith. He was a very hyper boy, but very sweet boy. He was a sadist. He used to attack anyone and he used to enjoy. Doctor suggested, please transfer him to Arvada Mental Hospital. Finally, we had no choice. We transferred him. He was there in the hospital for a few months. Later on, he came back. But he was diagnosed TB, tuberculosis. We started a course for six months. No result. Second course for nine months. No result. Because he was so hyper, he used to get the medicine and threw away. He never used to take proper food. No way ready for that. Finally, he was diagnosed as suffering from incurable TB, MDR, last stage. Doctors told me to separate him. Where? We asked the government where to separate, where to send. Nowhere in Maharashtra. In Nainital, there is a center, I was told. What can we do? We put him along with other children because there was no other way. Things took a surprising turn. One day, fine morning, he came to me and told, Father, can you give me a room there? There is a room. Shall I go and stay there? Under the water trying, there was a room. I had asked him earlier, can you stay there? No, 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 I won't stay. Now he's coming and asking me, can I stay there? He became like an angel. So sweet, so obedient, always bearing the mask. He was having side effects, loose motion, vomiting, everything earlier when the, he was taking the medicine. This time medicine was very strong, everyday injection, but very punctual for the medicine. No side effects. Doctors were asking, no side effects. How can it happen? But boy was so good. He played Diwali, cracking blasters, everything. The night, along with other children, they went to sleep, and still he was cracking crackers. But on the following day, he drowned in a pond. He went after the duck. It was a shock. None of us could bear it. We, I couldn't tolerate it. After a few days, I was waiting in the railway station to pick up a friend, my friend of one of one friend of mine. He was coming in the midnight, one o'clock train. So I told Lilith, "You have given me such a shock, but please tell me." If you have obtained mukti, and if you are in peace, give me a sign. I want it. I want a friend of mine who was not, not talking to me for the last one year. He calls me at now itself. Dear friends, I just told him like that. Then I got the call. Twelve o'clock, 12.30. He was asking, Thomas, what happened? What happened? I couldn't answer. I was with joy. Dear friends, these are the specks of joy when we are working with this type of children. 
There are hardships, difficulties, problems. But when we work, we experience this joy. Often my friends ask me, Thomas, are you not tired working with them for so many years? I say, no. Every day is a booster. I have so many dreams. I don't even tell my friends. Still more and more dreams. As Abdul Kalam said, I believe if you have a dream, there is a chance to get it fulfilled. From unexpected corner, people will come and support you. That's how I go ahead. I keep my dream, and when I start working with that, thinking on that, someone is coming and asking, OK, I'm telling like this. See, I am staying in a remote village, not even having a telephone connection, no internet. Even the connectivity is very poor. But people once in a while come and say, I'll do something. Then immediately I jump and start. I'm sure I'm going to fulfill it. I have no targets. I have to finish it tomorrow, day after tomorrow. But when I look back, I can see God was so kind. You were so kind to me and our children. Embrace the uncertainty. You will enjoy it. You will relax it. You will be successful. Thank you.